Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the uh, February the 11th Select Board. So let's get started. We now have our 7 o'clock appointment right on schedule. We have the Council on Aging. We'll let them start off. So they're going to present their budget to us. Great, thank you. Um, if I could start off with two announcements that I'd like to make. Um, I just want to acknowledge um, with the select board and the town um, thanking Kathleen Fisk for almost 18 years um, with the Happy Council on Aging, starting here at Town Hall, um, keeping things organized for reporting. Um, we miss her tremendously, but um, she did a great job, and I just want to put a shout out to her and have her acknowledged. Um, and the other comment that I want to make in the wake of uh, the recent weather that we've had is I want to say thank you to the DPW because they've been doing a great job making it accessible for the seniors. And Gary in particular, he's there before me or with me opening the building and making sure that it's safe for everybody to enter both entrances. And it's just a phone call away. So it's it's a great job that they do, and I just want to acknowledge that. So onward with the budget. Um, the budget is a reflection of changes that we've made um, last year, putting funds where they had been more historically spent with the same amount of dollars. We did add that other position, which brought us up last year. Um, we're keeping our budget, in fact, there's a, we're only asking for 0.38% increase over last year. Um, again, doing a little bit of shifting around um, due to loss of funding from Highland Valley Elder Services for the outreach worker. You'll see that we are asking for 1864 more in that category. But after having Kathy retire, her replacement will start on a much lower pay grade and so we're actually coming out pretty even and um, haven't brought anything else up in any of the other line items um, reflecting an additional $288 over last year's budget. Any questions? I, I had a concern. Um, and I don't know where it is. I know we're all supposed to be um, <coughs> level funded at this point, but I mm -hmm. have received some phone calls in regards to the van usage and if um, it be more made available at different times for people um, going to doctor's offices and things like that. And, we're, and we are aware of that need and we've made some concrete steps. I'm glad that you brought that up to try and address that. Mm -hmm. um, I had put in for another grant to Highland Valley Elder Services to address that, and it was funded by less than 50%. So um, they wanted to highlight some of the six week programming that they were bringing to us. Um, so we made an agreement with them to utilize the van on those days to bring people for that particular program and have an additional 10 days of service throughout the year, which would be the totality of the $2,700 grant. Mm -hmm. Knowing that it wasn't meeting the need that you just spoke of for elders that no longer drive to get to medical appointments, um, pick up prescriptions, necessary things, you know, that they have to do. Um, I spoke with um, Jane Nevinsmith right after this grant came out the way it did and I said we need to do something we need this needs only going to increase and I can't keep going to the town and saying we need more because we did double fund the drivers from last year to from the year prior so we have now established um, with the IRS a friends of Hadley Council on Aging it is a 501c3 nonprofit that will be doing fundraising and their goal is to raise the additional $7,000 for this coming fiscal year that would add one full day of van service a week for doing those things for seniors that no longer drive. 
So we're, we worked at it. We got a solution. Um, it's, it's all said and done. Now the fundraising begins. It was in the newsletter that we've, we've gotten that far. And they've done a tremendous job of uh, working hard to make it happen in a very short period of time with the legalities. And um, we have our EIN number. We're good to go. We're just organizing and getting out there. So good. we're aware of that need. We're aware that it's only going to increase. And we're taking steps to try and fund that. Thank you. Could you give us um, just a sense of the, the numbers <coughs> in terms of, just, you know, what are you seeing any sort of trend in terms of more usage of the council? or? Um, we are seeing different segments of the population come in now. Um, people that used to bring their mothers in are now coming in for programming. Um, over the last full year, we've been making changes such as the monthly birthdays. Instead of sending a postcard and maybe getting two to four responses, we'll have nine to 15 additional people. <clears throat> And now we're seeing them come back where they weren't before because we've really made it a point of if they're new to the center, giving them a handout, showing them how to sign up for congregate meals, making sure that they get a tour of the senior center and what we have to offer, and taking some time to integrate them during that time um, that they're there that day with other people that are there. Nine out of 10 people that come for that that have never been to the senior center see somebody that they know that they haven't seen in a long time when they come for that and it kind of just makes it all okay and then it becomes a social interaction rather than I'm too young to go to a senior center um, and I don't really love the name senior center because that kind of sensibility is changing um, along with a lot of the things that we need to be offering so yes yeah, so I am seeing a lot of different faces Questions? No. So then on your budget at the bottom, you kind of figured out the, you kind of gave us a little cheat sheet for what the goals would be and the steps would Correct. be, which aren't on the budget now. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.